Welcome back to Let's Play Grand Turismo 4, Part 58. So, uh, so much for getting into more frequent uploads, because I mentioned doing that, like, two videos ago, which has been about three weeks at this point. And, uh, this time I actually do have a valid reason as to why that happened. Um, pretty much all hell froze over. Yeah, the, the Texas stuff. I was a part of that. I didn't have power for only like 48 hours. But before that, I actually went to Colorado for about a week. So that was fun. And then our flights got canceled back. And I'll just ramble about this shit after I get started with this. So, uh, this is going to be a weird one. Because it's pretty much the same competition with the Thousand Miles event. And I'm going to be using the Jag E type in this one. And it's still going to be overpowered. But it's kind of difficult to choose a car that's suited for this. As far as like A spec points go. So I'm just going to go with it. If the Cobra shows up, I'll just restart. If not, then. Yeah. I want to drive this thing, so I'm driving it. That's pretty much that. So, uh, we're doing the World Classic Car Championship thing. So, up to 1970, like I said, same competition as the Thousand Miles Championship. So, let's just get right into it. Alright, perfect. No Cobra, but it's still gonna be quite boring. So, that's kinda why I bought the standard tires for this. Just to at least do a little bit of something. But it's not going to do much still. I forgot I had nitrous on this thing. I don't know when the hell I put that on. But yeah, I'm, I'm taking it off for this. Because I honestly really do not need it. Alright, here we go. First race at Fuji 80s. For two laps. So this should be a relati relatively short episode. Although boring. But I could care less for these classic cars to begin with. So... So yeah, I don't know what other event to use this thing in, so I'm going to use it here. And he's going to push me into the grass like always. They always do this on Fuji. And uh, now it's time for a cakewalk. Pretty much. And since I don't have to worry about restarting any of these races, uh, this is going to be a rambling video. I'm sure you're all excited for that. Anyways, so, pretty much what happened as far as, like, the Texas freeze over shit. So, I went to Colorado without, like, knowing of the storm beforehand. They just said, like, oh, it's going to get pretty fucking cold. And I'm like, sweet. I like cold weather. And then we get to Colorado, and then, like, a day goes by, and they're like, all right, we're going to get some snow, probably some freezing rain. I'm like, okay, whatever. And it, it's whatever. We're not driving back anyways, we're flying, so... What... What's the worst that could happen? You know? And then they started saying... There's gonna be power outages... Frozen water pipes... Record snowfall... And I'm like, oh... Interesting. And then there was like, a 50 car pile up in Fort Worth. Some, pe some people said it was over 100, but... Then I'm like, oh shit, this is, this is real. And then it actually happened. My flight got canceled the night before we were flying out. So we booked another flight and that got canceled as well. And we're like, well shit, how the fuck are we going to get home? Our power is probably out. We have animals at home. Nobody can make it across town because the roads are icy. Nobody knows how to drive on snow around here. So, like, that's when the oh shit really started to kick in. So we're like, fuck it, we gotta get home. So we kept our rental car, which is a Jeep Wrangler. It was fucking awesome, I loved it. Except for the fact that the back seats don't 
seal that well, and it was fucking freezing back there, but that's besides the point. We pretty much handled the snow like it was nothing, because we're used to driving in it. We go to Colorado pretty much every year. And everyone else, they were either sliding all over the place in a ditch, or they were going like 10 miles an hour on a state highway. Which was completely unnecessary. You could you, like, even though the roads were covered in ice and there were like piles of snow and like ruts carved out on asphalt, like through the snow, you could easily do like 35 or higher, like maybe 35 to 45 miles an hour on it. But people were just crawling because they didn't know what to do. And they thought all white stuff was ice and it was danger when it's not the case. Oh, hey, this race is already done. Woo. I mean, people can't fucking drive here to begin with. And now we have snow and ice on the road, and everybody's either crashing or they're just getting in everyone's way and making everything worse. So, 10,000 credits for the first race. Boop. All right, next reset, El Capitan Reverse. Fuck it, let's just get into it. So... Yeah. It was a little bit hairy. So pretty much like our entire drive from Colorado back to Texas. I'm not going to say exactly where I live in Texas because that's just weird. It's nobody's business. But every single mile of road we drove it on was just covered in snow between Colorado and where I live. It was fucking crazy. And we actually drove through a wind turbine field near Sweetwater, Texas. It has like, I don't know the exact number of turbines it has, but I would guess around like five to 10,000 turbines. And they were frozen. About like maybe 5% or less of them were spinning. And the power lines were all frozen over. Some of the power poles were actually buckled, bending, or like completely snapped. I'll even show pictures of it on screen, even though it kind of goes against my whole rule of clean videos and whatnot, but yeah, it was pretty crazy. And I think that attributed to a lot of the power outages around here, because freezing rain isn't any joke. Because it falls as rain, and then it freezes on contact with anything, and it just starts building up on top of itself, and it starts weighing things down, and making road slippery and it just causes all sorts of bad if it was just a complete snow blizzard throughout the whole state i don't think it would have been anywhere near as bad but the freezing rain definitely slowed down traffic or even made like travel impossible in a lot of places especially for 18 wheelers they can't get supplies in and it also weighed down transmission lines And I saw that firsthand. So it was pretty crazy. So then whenever... Actually, there's still a little bit between there and actually getting home itself, but... We started getting close to town, and the road... This is like, that's where the roads got extremely bad. So like, between Colorado and Sweetwater, Texas, the roads weren't actually that bad. They were relatively dry. Because the sun heats up the asphalt, and the asphalt stays warmer than the air, so it allows ice to, ice and snow to melt off it sooner than the ground, but... Um, yeah, pretty much, like, after we passed Sweetwater, Texas, everything just started getting worse. That's when the roads were completely covered in snow, you can't see any asphalt. And in some places, there was, like maybe a foot or two of snow on the edges of the road and there were only like one there was only like one lane available and that lane was in between two lanes like asphalt lanes if you know what I mean some of them were over the median too which was kind of crazy but there was also like almost nobody driving there was even less people driving during these conditions than like whenever COVID lockdowns first initiated But still, nobody knew how to drive at all. People were slow, or they were sliding everywhere. 
And uh, whenever it came to power outages, like traffic lights being out, nobody knows that a fucking traffic light with no power is supposed to be treated as a four-way stop. Nobody knows this. And it's infuriating to me. Because, like, you'll pull up to a stoplight that's that has no power, and you're like, all right, bet, stop sign. I can dig it. So you stop, and then there's another car approaching. But you're like, if you assume that they know how the fucking thing works, then you would assume that they would slow down and stop, right? Well, no, they don't. They just keep on going through it. Even if that natural four-way stop that has a stoplight at it, they wouldn't even have the right-of-way if there wasn't a stoplight there. But they still drive through it anyway. I would guess, like, at least 50% of the drivers didn't know that shit. And it's honestly quite sad. But hey, what can you do? You can't fix stupid. Especially the drivers here. I'll complain about drivers until the day I die. Because they suck. Another 10,000 credits for race number two. And uh, I have almost completely lost track of what I was talking about because I had to wait for a thumbnail to pop up. Shit. Uh. Yeah. Also, Nurburgring, hello. <clears throat> so yeah, um, where was I? I think it was something about drivers being stupid. So anyways, we finally get home and the power's out. So I'm like, fuck it, my relative's place has power. Let's just go there. So we all go there. And there's power there for most of the day. Uh, actually two days, I just remembered. I spent the night there. And, uh... Pretty much, the power lasted all night, through the morning, up until the next day at around 11.30 p.m., somewhere around there. And then their power goes out, just as we're about to fall asleep, so we're like, oh shit. Like, we got a gas fireplace going and everything, but just that. So then, I keep checking my ring doorbell every hour or so to see if the power is on, and then once you know it, the power comes on at about 12.30. So we're like, fuck it, let's go back right now. Even if the power goes out there again, we're gonna be without power at either, pl either place, so... So we pretty much go home at 12.30. It was only like a couple miles away, but whatever. And dude, this... It was like a ghost town. There was like hardly any power anywhere else in the city. But it was really eerie because... Like the neighborhoods don't have power, right? You're driving through and you don't see any house lights on. You don't see any street lights on. It's kind of spooky. But then... It was raining at the time. Like freezing rain slash sleet. So it was really cloudy. And this, the sky was just super bright for some reason. It didn't feel like it was 1 a.m. It was really odd. Maybe the clouds weren't that thick and the moon was shining or something. I don't know, but... It was really strange. But anyways... Yeah, it's like a ghost town. I've never really seen anything like it in my life. Even Colorado was n like never been that bad. Every time we've gone. So that was an experience. But yeah, we get home and just we've been here ever since. Power hasn't really gone off. It's only gone off like once. We had low water pressure for a while, but our water's normal now. Our power's normal. The stores are still ransacked, so that's a problem. But yeah, other than that, everything else is pretty much normal here.
it was just crazy seeing like the roads that are normally jam packed with traffic had almost nobody on them like in the middle of the day too and they were just completely covered in snow you didn't see any asphalt or concrete anywhere it was very very bizarre and honestly I kind of liked it because it was fucking cool but also also not so cool because water pipes getting frozen people's homes getting flooded or freezing no power and a lot of people are blaming politics over this bullshit and here we go into politics talk or talk yay everybody's favorite topic but all I'm gonna say is like this was like a once in a 50 year natural disaster something like that this has never happened before in a lot of people's lives living here in Texas my grandparents have never seen anything like this before and they've lived here like the majority of their life oh, I'm losing it so yeah this was like a freak storm a not so natural natural disaster if I may put it and then we have Californians and Floridans and all these other people talking shit on Texas like oh y'all can't handle your power grid well, guess what, motherfucker? California's always on fire. Oregon's always on fire. Washington's always on fire. Florida's getting raped by hurricanes every month. Every state has their own problems. This was our freak weather event. This was Texas's equivalent of Hurricane Sandy, I would probably say. Maybe. I don't know. Because New Jersey hardly ever gets hurricanes, and they had a Hurricane Sandy, so take that. I don't know. People just blow shit way out of proportions. Or way out of proportion. <laughs> so, uh, I think I've gone over everything. As far as that stuff goes. Like I said, he was freaking crazy. And, uh, to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't mind it happening again. I'm saying that because I went through a semi okay, but some parts of it was cool. It's like the COVID lockdown thing. It's a little bit bittersweet. There's positives and negatives to both of it. Obviously, the negatives outweigh the positives, but the positive things are kind of good, too. For example, when COVID hit, everybody, pretty much everybody started giving you your personal space, which is something that never happens because people are always rude and they like to stand as close behind you as they possibly can in the grocery store line, breathing down in your fucking neck like some sort of freak. And they never give you personal space. And they never wash their goddamn hands and then they smear it on all their shit. But now they don't do that anymore. For the most part. So there's one positive thing about that. I know there's plenty of negatives too, but yeah. Try to look at the bright side of things, her, her, her. Trying to sound like one of those forced positivity hipsters or whatever you call them. What's up, guys? I'm super excited bringing you guys this super exciting new content. I hope you guys are as super excited as I am because super exciting things are super exciting.
My super bad driving is super bad. So yeah. The front of this thing looks cool, the back of it looks ugly. Also, there's no mirrors. People were savages before the 70s. I think this thing is a 62. Might be wrong on that, though. 62 or 63. And it's sliding it. Uh-oh, hold it together. Okay, I was getting ready to say I haven't spun out yet in this video, but there we go. Technically, I didn't jinx myself because I didn't actually say it out loud. Ha ha. Anyway, yep, yeah, 10,000 credits for this one. And time for race number four. These are going a lot slower than the first race. Alright, here we go at Monacoont. Monaco. Yeah. I have officially run out of things to say. Finally. So, just race commentary, I guess. Unless I think of other irrelevant stories to tell. Alright, I got one. Once there was an ugly barnacle. He was... So no. I can't turn this thing. Goddamn. For some reason, this track seems like it has a lot less grip. I didn't change anything. Either that or it's just I'm paying attention now. Sort of. And bonk. Oh, one wheel peel. Let's see how we can remove or manure, yes, maneuver around these two. Bonk. Janetta, what the hell are you doing? I think you just had a stroke or something. Ugh. These four speed gears are so long, it kind of makes it hard to tell if I should downshift or not. Also, I figured out something weird. The other day, playing this, and I guess I'll go ahead and show it off. I had no idea you can do this, but let me just get the wheel straight first. So if I pause it and I press select, then the wheel shows up, which is a feature that I never knew existed. Too bad it pretty much blocks the view of the entire car. Yeah, now I'm screwing around with it because, oh, I can see myself driving. <laughs> Actually, it's a good way of telling the input delay, too. There's just a tad of input delay. Interesting. But you know what? I'll, I'll just drive the rest of the race like this. Screw it. Because I haven't done it in a while. I 
And I know I turn in way too soon. That's just my driving style. This game doesn't really compensate for tire wear like that anyways. Or at least I don't think. There were a lot of things I wanted to experiment on this game, like testing out suspension setups and seeing like if toe angle affects tire wear and stuff like that. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe one day I'll get around to it, but I don't know. That was a terrible chicane. I kind of like this wheel display, actually. Not gonna lie. Not a really ideal location for it, but then again, there's not really another better place to put it, because putting it off to the side would be kind of weird. Did not need the downshift. Whoa, okay. That was just a tad early on the turn. -in. But yeah, I kind of like it. But I'm going to switch back. Because I can't do it forever. It'll be a little bit too distracting by that point. So, take a look at the championship rankings. It's all going to be the same, probably. Actually, the G4 and the, the Alfalfa. I think they swapped positions on the race. Not sure when. I guess it was this one. But yeah. So, there's race number four. Our next 10,000 credits. Bop. Bubble be bop. And time for the finale. Alright, here we go at Maze de Raceway Lag Laguna Seca. I know how to pronounce it. I was just being retarded right there. Calm down. Yeah. Also known as Plastic Floor Mat Raceway. Because that's all WeatherTech is, just shitty plastic. I fucking hate WeatherTech floor mats. Especially when, like, alright, this is going to be like a random, completely random rant. But it needs to be said. Because it pisses me off way more than it should. So... For any of you that have ever worked at a dealership before, or have even been to them quite often, you may have come across some cars that were detailed by the dealership's detail team and whatnot, obviously. And sometimes they put this gross, disgusting, hideous looking glaze all over the fucking plastics of the entire car, and it's the absolute worst shit ever. It's like lotion. Like, who the fuck thinks of putting that on? First off, it makes it look like shit. Some plastics weren't meant to be shiny. But they just lather it over everything because everything has to look like a fucking mirror to them. Second, it gets all those residue on your hands. That feels like lotion. You, it's hard as shit to wash it off because it's designed to, like, stick to shit. And it feels fucking gross. And it's also almost impossible to remove after it's put on. I don't know why this... Oh yeah, that's right, weather tech floor mats. That's what made me think of it. Because they always fucking put it on the weather... Or on the floor mats as well. So... Pretty much what would happen is... You get inside of a car that's been detailed by those retards. And then your shoes get coated in that shit. And then you step out, especially if it's wet outside. You take one step out, and you're about to fucking slip and crack the back of your head open. That's happened to me several times, because, uh... My old job, I used to take photos of cars at dealerships. 
So I'd be the one to, like, obviously take the photos of them, sometimes video, put them on the website. So I'm, like, in and out of cars all day, especially the used cars. And some dealers, they just fucking put that shit everywhere, and it pissed me off. So yeah, um... If you work at a dealership, tell your detail people to fuck right off with that. Please, thank you. You'll be doing the world a favor. Anyways, yeah, random rant over. I like complaining about things. Because I'm a negative person, oh. Praise some things, bitch about other things. That's my motto in life. And I'm going off. I wonder if I could put dirt tires on this thing. I probably can, because it's... Uh, RWD. And I said that because saying rear wheel drive is kind of a challenge for me. It's like a tongue twister for some reason. So I just go RWD. Or FWD. And as far as the accent goes, no, I don't have a southern accent, even though I'm born and raised here in the south pretty much my whole life. My goddamn man, I tell you what, Jimbo, Jimbo over there, he went back into that cornfield, man, he planted all that corn and all that wheat, man, and then deer just been bed down over there ever since, like, last year, he's all this big old buck, probably like a good old eight-pointer with about 120 inches on it thing, oh, oh my god, man, that thing old thing came running up here, man, and he just, like, pulled out my shotgun, and then they tried to shoot him, but I had the wrong load in it, had a bird shot instead of a buck shot, and then that thing old thing, he just went right off, man. That was kind of pitched that day, man. I tell you what. Jimbo, where's my Bud Light? See, I'm decent at it. Also, hello. Meme machine. So, yeah. I'm decent at the... At the southern accent. So, there we go. There we have it. And, uh, yeah. Kind of a strange video, because I was kind of lost during all that rambling. Also, this is a 61. That's, a uh, interesting. Anyway, let's check out the... The Wagoon. Or Carriage. Probably gonna use this in the Nürburgring 24 hour or something. Totally. Bro, look at all that weight reduction, man. Only 290 kilos? I think he must be fast. Huh. Anyways, yeah. Uh, stupid shit over. Stay tuned for more Gran Turismo 4.